Welcome to another video from Roland Mösel, founder of Planetary Engineering Group Earth. Green dogmatism and the destruction of the German photovoltaics industry. Autumn 1991, I started a study to build my own house. And I discovered that one of my neighbors is energy consultant of the Salzburg provincial government. And he brought me several books. And the most important book he brought me was Reichnagel and Sprenger, Rocket Book for Heating and Cooling Technology. 1,600 pages full of formulas and tables. I got only a photo of the 94-95 edition. And this was very important information for me. Everybody who would read this book would came to the same conclusions about the energy transition. Let's look on one square meter of rub seed or sunflower. After one year, you get 0.1 liter of vegetable oil out of it. And when you put it in a diesel engine car, you can drive with it two kilometers. But in Germany are at this time about 40 million cars and when they are 15,000 kilometers a year underway, we would need the shield of 300,000 square kilometers of rub seed or sunflower fields. Impossible because traffic is only a small part of the total energy consumption of a country. So let's look an alternative for it, the photovoltaic. I assume here 125 kilowatt hours yearly shield for one square meter. This is photovoltaic from 1991. Now we are much better, the technology improved. And with one square meter, these 125 kilowatt hours are enough to drive an electric car 800 kilometers. And all the cars in Germany need only 750 square kilometer instead of 300,000 square kilometer. So it's logical that the alternative to make all these plants growing and so on is impossible because the shield is far too low. The naive idea about the energy transition, there is thermal energy from fossil energy and replace it with thermal energy from renewable energy by all the plants, the sunflowers, the wood and so on. And there is electricity generated by thermal energy from fossil energy and replace it all with electricity from renewable energy. So it cannot work. We have not the areas for the shield of the thermal energy. So the real one is much more electricity. The electric car instead of the internal combustion engine car, the heat pump instead of combustion heating. And natural, you see, the demand for electricity increases in this case very much. I started February 1992 with my first book, Advance to Solar Age, and I published this book in October 1993. And it was central about the theory, when we change to renewable energy, the electricity demand of Germany will increase from 500 terawatt hours in 1990 to 1,200 terawatt hours in 2040. I thought this is logical, this is everybody should think like this. But big surprise, in November 17, 2007, I was at an event of the Green Economy Salzburg. And you see here at the wall, last exit, energy transition. We have to do the energy transition. You see here, left, low, 
my electric scooter. I showed this electric scooter that this is a great alternative for city traffic and that photovoltaic is cheaper than gasoline. In the discussion round, I declared the electricity consumption of my four persons household is 1,600 kilowatt hours per year. But I will be proud to increase this consumption five times to 8,000 kilowatt hours per year. Because then I will replace my 1,500 liters of diesel per year with electricity. Because then I will replace the 500 liters of gasoline for my wife's car with electricity. Because then I will replace the 12,000 kilowatt hours of natural gas for heating with electricity. I will produce most of this electricity by myself with photovoltaics. And surprise, I thought this is just a logical statement. Somebody, everybody has to agree. But in the break, a vendor of alternative electricity came to me and said to me, Thank you, Mr. Mösel. We would never have dared to say that. Oh, it's logical. Why not dared? And then I discovered there is a dogma at the Greens. The dogma of the electricity consumption will decrease. 3rd August 2009. I read in the morning my emails and big surprise. This is from Google Alerts and Google Alerts told me Radio China International made a statement. The chief economist of the International Energy Agency, IEA Fatih Birol, warned for a global energy crisis. Oh, I didn't discover it in newspapers here. I discovered it in independent co-United Kingdom, but silence in the German newspapers. And this had a good reason. This is the US oil production. Where the red arrow is, in this time was the statement. At this time, it was not possible to foresee how successful will the fracking be. And without US fracking, I made this red line when I put it together and oh, without US fracking, there would be 8 million barrels of oil missing on the world market today. And the big oil price crisis 2008, which caused the world economic crisis 2008, there had been only 3.5 million barrels missing on the world market. So the statement of Fatih Birol was very honest and at this time, he had to do this warning. And one of his spells was, we have to leave oil before the oil leaves us. At this time, there was election campaign for the German parliament. And I called several green politicians about this. This is something like a 11 meter in soccer, you have to use this material. We have to make a fast transit to renewable energy because we have to leave oil before the oil leaves us. Oh, no reaction. Even aggressive reactions against me. Oh, why? It's a dogma. The electricity consumption should go down and when I say, oh, we have to change fast to replace all the oil in the cars, mm, then the electricity consumption would go up. Mm, it's against the dogma. 2013, four years later, was again 
election campaign for the German parliament. And at this time, I had several times discussed personally with Hans Rose Fell the design of the energy feed-in law in Germany, the design of the German energy transition. And I wrote him, you will lose in the election campaign. You have to do big teams, and this big team would be solar building land. Imagine there is cheap building land, but you are only allowed to build the houses which produce very much electricity. So a village of this can export much electricity to the country, and this would be great, a benefit for both. The house builders have cheap ground, and the community has cheap electricity from photovoltaic. Great, but no reaction about this. This was the election results, and you see Greens 2.3% down. They make something like, oh, we make a wacky day in cantinas. Oh, great team. Great team to lose some percent at the election. January 2014, I published my second book. And in the second book was also a chapter about 100% renewable energy for Germany. And this time, I know much more than all the years before, in 1991 and two about energy storage methods. And it's energy storage for day-night balancing. Batteries are used. And for summer winter balancing, power to methane, underground storage for methane. Germany has already 25 cubic kilometers of this. And on this other end, combined cycle power plants to make again electricity from the stored methane. And February 2014 was in Salzburg an event of the Bavarian Austrian Solar Energy Initiatives. And Hans Josef Fell was coming to this event as a speaker. And I was shocked seeing this picture on the wall. Green energy transition. The electricity consumption will go down. How should this happen? We change all cars from internal combustion engine to electric cars. We change house heating from combustion to the heat pump. And the electricity consumption should go down. How? This is a wonder. This is not reality. In January 2015, Professor Volker Quaschning posted on Facebook, I call for 200 gigawatt photovoltaic expansion in Germany. 200 gigawatt, this was much more than the Association of German Solar Energy demanded. They demanded really only 70 gigawatt. But also 200 gigawatt was much too few photovoltaic. And so I made a telephone call to him and I discussed nearly 20 minutes with him about my first book and all I have done and studied and what my conclusion are. And then I remember every time he told me, Mr. Mösel, you are right, but I don't dare to set far out on a limb. Oh, is it dangerous to make a scientific study? Can, it, can this really be that dogmas stop people from researching very important things? Like, how should an energy transition really work? Yes, it seems so. 20 January 2016, I visited an event of the Green Economy Salzburg. Global Post 
close reality. And you see here, oh, all goes down in United States, in the OECD. Only China has luck, and in the development countries, it stagnates. And this was not something to avoid, not how can we avoid this disaster. This was something, oh, we wanted, how nice it is, poverty for everybody. This was the main idea of this event, poverty for everybody. The rich countries go down and the poor countries stagnate. Oh, we make an exception with China. Yeah, terrible vision, a vision nobody wants. Only cream can want a vision like this. Big surprise, June 20, 2060, Professor Volker Quaschning published the study Sector Coupling through the energy transition. Sector coupling means we make now everything with electricity. We drive our cars with electricity. We heat our homes with heat pumps powered by electricity. Electricity for everything. Just as in my first book from 1993. But it took 23 years until my book was scientific, verified by this study. I compared now the different studies. My first book from 1993, my second book from 2014, and the new study of Professor Volker Quaschning in 2016. Yes. Terawatt hours of electricity demand. It's all in the same range. Only he prefers more wind energy. Per installed kilowatt, you have about twice the shield of wind energy as at photovoltaic in Germany. And I prefer more photovoltaics, but these are things we can discuss, find an optimum in a scientific way, with a scientific discussion, and so, finally, after 23 years, my first book was scientific verified. What had been the consequences of this dogma? Professor Volker Quaschling destroyed successfully this dogma. All the green politicians who said before the electricity demand will decrease suddenly agreed with this new study. Oh, I. I don't want to hear what I said some years ago. This is my opinion now. Um, they all changed their mind very successfully, but the consequences had been the following. In the year 2009, in the world economic crisis, big surprise, the photovoltaic industry in Germany grow. And 2010, 11, 12, the photovoltaic industry in Germany had been on a very good level, but they had been dependent on the energy feed-in law and the tariffs. When you make a new photovoltaic system, you get a contract for 20 years for a feed-in tariff. And all the 20 years, you receive the same amount of money per kilowatt hour. But in this time, they decreased the feed in tariff very radical down and so suddenly the German photovoltaic industry collapsed. I know this is very good from personal experience. At this time, autumn 2013, I was busy with the four most important pages of my second book, Calculation Error. The four pages with ads to finance the printing of the book. And in the morning I read newsletters, oh, this good solar company I wanted to call today. They are now on the bankrupt list. Oh, this company also on the bankrupt list. Very sorry, I wanted to call them today to make an insert in my book. It was really a terrible time because so many good companies I had known from all the years before when bankrupt at this time. 
But when the wood said, oh, we need not 70 gigawatt photovoltaic, we need 400, 600, 900, 1200 gigawatt of photovoltaic, there would be a complete different situation. What would have happened if this study of Professor Volker Quaschning would have appeared 10 years earlier, 20 years earlier, 30 years earlier? All the knowledge to write this study had been there already. It was based on the same data as I wrote my first book, 1992 to 1993. All the data was available. There was only a stop for this. This was this green dogma. The electricity demand will decrease. And this has further consequences. Here, what to do in Germany with photovoltaic. Up to 70 gigawatt, you just switch off caloric power plants when there is enough sunshine. But there is a limit. This limit is 70 gigawatt. You cannot switch off more thermal power plants as they are switched on. And then there is a second level up to about 300 gigawatt. When there is excess solar power, you store all the electricity in batteries. And then is one day, a nice sunny summer day, where all the country runs 24 hours on solar electricity only. But it makes no sense to make much more batteries. You would make about 3 kilowatt hours of batteries per kilowatt peak photovoltaic installed, but it makes not sense to make much more batteries. And there comes the third level, the summer winter balancing. And there we need a very cheap energy storage. Cheap, but the efficiency is bad. This is power to methane or power to X in general, it could be also methanol or hydrogen. So we use power to X for summer winter balancing. And this means when we have excess electricity we cannot store in all the batteries, we send it to the power to methane units and they make methane and store it in all the big 25 kilometer already existing underground gas storage systems and in the winter time when there is a dark and no wind or in this case the combined cycle power plants will produce electricity with the methane produced in the summertime. But because the target was so small there was no development in Germany for the second and third level. They had been only concentrated in the first level up to 70 gigawatt. There is nothing for demand-based grid feed-in and so on in the EEG, the energy feed-in law, nothing like this. This dogma has stopped all this development for so long time, 23 years from my first book until Professor Volker Quaschning published his study in 2016. This was another video from Roland Mösel, founder of Planetary Engineering Group Earth, and as always, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified when I make my next video. Thank <laughs> you.